Hi and welcome to my C Sharp Web Driver video series. In this video we're going to continue from where we left off and start looking at using a testing framework to help run our tests. We're just going to quickly jump into this and not waste too much time. In our last video what we did was we used WebDriver to do various things. Specifically we used IT locators to help find stuff on web pages and click on them. Nothing too difficult. The flaw with this approach is however quite bad and let me explain what I mean by that. So at the moment we are obviously doing a lot of things, we're making new browsers, we're going to places and we're clicking on things and in the end we also are looking through what we want to click on and being somewhat selective but the biggest problem with this approach is we're using a main method to run this. Now, WebDriver in itself is a framework used to help interact with web pages. And as such, its usability is very focused, usually inside the testing domain. So if we take the approach of using WebDriver to help write tests or to help drive testing, we can't really use this main method approach because what happens here is when you effectively run your application all the code inside it runs but you don't want to run your test tightly coupled with your application what you ideally want to do is have your test somewhere else doing something else effectively testing your application but being able to run the test as of when you want without having to rely on running your main application so to do this we can use a couple of different approaches uh, but the best one is to actually adopt a testing framework as part of your code and then write tests which effectively test your application so in this instance the application that's under test is my website the test room so we're just going to go to this java test site and this would be the application that is currently under test. So any test we write would be effectively used to test this application. And a couple of examples of tests could simply be trying to navigate to the contact page, for instance, filling in a few fields and hitting the send button. So to do this, what do we need to do? What are the steps where we can get to a point where we are able to test our application? So the first thing we need to do is actually decide on a testing framework. Once we've done that, we need to somehow see how we can install it as part of our current framework. And then once we've done that, the final step is quite obviously to actually go ahead and write some tests and see how we can then use the test to give us confidence of whether our application is working or not. So the focus of this video will quite simply be a setup of how to get a test framework up and running with our existing code. So the framework that I've decided to go with is called NUnit. Now NUnit is most likely the most common C sharp or other .NET testing framework out available to us. You can go ahead and use other frameworks if you like. They all do similar things but also have their own uniqueness about them. Uh, some are debatably more easier to use than others. It's is a preference thing. I've gone with NUnit on a couple of grounds. The first being it's probably the most common so most people would probably decide to go with NUnit and also because NUnit is most likely the first testing framework a beginner would likely pick up if they were to write code in C Sharp. So those are my reasons for going with NUnit. So to do this quite simply we need to download the installer for NUnit. And I have downloaded the .msi. Now you can go ahead and download the zip file if you like. It's whichever suits you best. So I've got a Windows environment, so I'm just going to go with MSI. For those wondering how do I navigate to this page, it's quite simple. It's nunit.org, which brings you here. And then just click on this download link here. Once you're on the download link, go ahead and download whichever package you choose. So once you've done that, 
go to downloads you'll end up with a file like this so assuming you've already got visual studio installed if you now run this this will just run the installer so go ahead and double click on the install file and hit run next make sure you read this license agreement now I've already read it because I have installed it in the past so when you get here you can choose whichever you prefer I usually go with typical and hit install and it will now install and then hit finish so as a result of installing this what has actually happened well first of all it's actually created a directory under your C drive so you go to C drive program files and then go to end unit we can see here that it's created this end unit directory now there's a couple of important things in this directory that we need to be aware of the first is if you hit on bin and then you hit framework it's now installed a couple of DLL files for us now this DLL file are basically references that we will need to add into our project to be able to use n unit also if you hit the start button you should now have this n unit application also installed on your machine go ahead and click on that and what that will do is that will basically open up this n unit window and it is this window that we will use to run the test now sadly one of the side effects of using this built-in n unit is that when we want to run our test we have to do it in a different window altogether but there are many plugins as such we can use which we can use to directly run a test inside Visual Studio but for the moment for this video to keep things a little bit more streamlined and a little simple we're just gonna go ahead with this approach so now that we have NUnit and we have our DLL files how do we actually use it in our code so the first thing we need to do is actually create a test class and once we've created the test class what we're going to do is we're going to write a single simple test just to make sure NUnit works on our machine as proof of concept that the NUnit framework is working and once we've done that we're actually going to go ahead and write a simple web driver test to make sure that using NUnit we're able to test our Java test site so let's begin so to do this I'm going to go to my solution and I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a new item and I need to add a class so this is going to be my test class and I'm going to call this web driver test sample and click add and what that's going to do is basically just create a new class so before I do anything I want to be able to use this class to write an unit test and to do that I need to now add in the references so to add in references it's quite simple just right click on the references under your solution and click add reference and in add reference what you need to do is add in the nunit.dlls now if you don't see the nunit dll files in your reference manager window just hit the browse button browse to the location of the dll files select both of them and hit add and that will add the dll files into your reference manager and then hit ok so now you've basically got access to those DLL files. So in order to write a test, we need to use the references in our class. To do that, it's quite simply using nunit dot framework, and that's it. So now with that we've effectively imported in our reference files, or rather to be C sharp specific we're using the reference file we now need to basically label our class as a test class and to do that we need to add in what are called attributes so we're just going to add in this as a test picture this attribute now effectively identifies this class as a test class or rather a class that will be picked up for test by an unit so we're going to go ahead and actually add in a simple test 
So the first thing we'll do is just write out a method for the test. So let's just say public void sample test. Now in this test what we want to do is quite simply let's just say we're going to check that the values of two different ints are the same. We're just going to say int a is equal to 10 and int b is also equal to 10. Now in order to actually test something or to rather to check something we need to write what's called an assert statement. An assert statement is simply a validation point that is happening inside a test. Now a couple of ground rules. A test should always have an assert statement otherwise there is absolutely no value in writing the test. It doesn't give us anything. It doesn't tell us anything. An assert statement effectively tells us whether something has passed or failed. Now for the moment it might not mean a lot but when we start writing our simple web driver test it will make a difference. So for the moment we're just going to say assert and we're just going to say r equal and we're going to say a is equal to b. Now to actually get nUnit to identify this method as a test method we actually need to annotate it as such or to be more specific we need to add in the relevant attribute for it and to do that it's quite straightforward we just identify it with the test attribute. Now what have we done so far? We've basically created a class and identified it as a test fixture and then in the class we've added in a method and identified that method as a test and we've added in an assert into the method also. So go ahead save that and then click build and build solution. So it just builds everything just to make sure there are no issues. Now if you open up your NUnit window and you go File, Open Project, what you need to do is basically open up this solution window here inside the NUnit window. So as you can see, I have opened up my solution inside NUnit and it's identified that there is a test class and it's also identified that there is a test method. So now to run the test, quite simply hit the run button here. And you can see that it's basically picked up the test and it's run the test. And it's that simple to run any unit test. That said, there is an obvious overhead in needing this any unit window to do it for us. But the bottom line is we are able to run a test. So let's go back and now let's add in our web driver test. So we're just going to say test and we're going to say public void sample web driver test to save some time I'm just going to copy in a little bit of this so I'm just going to instantiate a new driver and just navigate to the URL and I'm not going to do anything else I'm just going to try and assert on the fact that the driver URL contains web app. So in order to check that the driver URL contains the word web app, I obviously need to write an assert statement. So I'm just going to say assert true driver URL contains web app. Okay. Also, because I've got this red line, so that means that this current class cannot identify what these objects are. So I just need to start using the relevant namespaces. So it's using openqa.selenium and using openqa.selenium.firefox. Maybe I didn't use the right API, so let's just say contains 
oh, okay, it was probably just a spelling typo. Right, so we now have a new test. In this test, all we're saying is we're going to open up a new instance of the driver. We're going to navigate to this URL, and then we're going to assert that the URL contains web app. And just to make things a little bit cleaner, we're also going to go ahead and close the browser. Okay, so now, before I do this, if I just open up any unit, notice how it only has this one test in it. If I now save this and go build, build solution, then open up any unit, it's automatically identified without me having to do anything that there's another test that was added in. So now if we hit run, what we're expecting is two tests to run. The first being sample test and the second being sample web driver test. So let's hit the run button and see what happens. Okay, fantastic. Looks like it run first the sample test and also run the sample web driver test. When it ran our web driver test, we saw that it opened up a new Firefox browser, it navigated to our test app, it then checked that the URL contained web app, and then it closed the browser. And just to make sure it's definitely working, I'm going to change this to something like and rerun the test. So we're going to save, build, and just rerun. And we can see that the test has now failed, which is good because obviously the link does not contain subscribe to this channel. So in this video, we looked at how to set up NUnit as a test framework. And we also looked at how to write web driver tests using NUnit and the kind of value it can bring us. We have moved away from using this idea of running our tests using this main method approach and have moved to using testing frameworks instead, something web driver is actually more catered for. And that's it for this video folks. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.